Okay, today is June the 20th of 2021, and this is the Bible study um, component for Jehovah Elohim. So we watch the uh, Bible teaching. Uh, we watch the Bible teaching on Jehovah Elohim. And so we know that Jehovah Elohim means the Lord God. God being plural. He is in fact Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yet one God. He is the only true and living God. The creator of all who is sovereign and self-existing. He is, he is the supreme judge. He is the creator of all that is created. And the series focus scripture uh, what we um, for this whole series because we know this is going to be three separate series God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, Holy Spirit. We're doing it in three separate series. This is the focus scripture for all series 1 John 5 7 and 8. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The series four thought. So what what we uh, what are we wanting to gain as a result of this series? So God is a triune being, Father, Son, Spirit. He made us in His image and likeness, body, soul, and spirit. As we learn about the triune nature of God, we will also learn about the triune nature of man, and in doing so, we will gain a more effective and fulfilling walk of faith. So the scriptures that um, that we are looking at for this uh, title of God or name of God, Jehovah Elohim. So I looked at Genesis 2, 4 to 9 for the Bible teaching segment. And then Bible study participants also read Psalm 42. So I want to pull out more points further from the Bible teaching component. One, one point is, as Christians, we are to believe the Bible over the opinions of man. So, we all have heard, I'm sure, about theories about how everything came into existence. There are theories about how, how the world came into existence. There are theories, beliefs, and even teachings about how man came into existence. And... A lot of these theories are contrary to what the Bible teaches us. And so, as Christians, we are to follow what the Bible is telling us. Um, because the Bible, um, when God created everything, there was no man here on this earth. And so I talked about the prophet of the office. The office of the prophet, rather. And... Um, how God, in fact, reveals what he has done or will do to two people that he has anointed with the gift of prophecy. And so, and so we know that Moses was a prophet. I'm sorry, someone's phone, can you mute it? I'm not sure who it is. Um, but Moses was a prophet. And um, God told Moses how things began in, in, the, in the beginning. And so, uh, next point that I want to pull out. God can accomplish His plan in any way He decides. We have to remember, God is the Creator. He is the one who created the order of things, the way that things are going to work. He created it in the first place. If He created it, He can alter it when He's ready to. And we read about in the beginning and how He... Um, caused everything to grow before there was even a man to till the ground and even before it rained and how he caused water to come up uh, from the ground. God can do things any way he chooses and we need to realize that in our lives because sometimes we're so conditioned to believe that the way that the world has decided that things are going to work is the only way. But we have to remember that the world creates ways for things to happen. 
but God is the one who created all the things, including all the people. So he can override anything and any time he chooses. And that's anything. And that's how sometimes miracles even come into come to be. Because God can override the natural way that uh, events normally go when he wants to. And then the next point. We, we will allow... We allow God to form it. When we allow God to form and shape our lives, we will have life and eternal life. If you remember in the beginning, when God first created Adam and Eve, when he, when he created man, and, Adam, and Eve was actually in man, he created mankind. But mankind, even though it was there, it was not yet alive. It wasn't alive until he finished the process. He finished the process by breathing the breath of life into man. And so he caused man to be a living being. So when we are living in this, in this world, we are formed. We, we are formed. We are people. We're here. But, but God considers us that we do not actually have life, ex meaning eternal life. We have life to exist on this earth. We are existing just like in the beginning. They were existing. They existed, but they did not have eternal life. They didn't have real life yet. And so God breathed the breath of life in, into them. When we allow God to, when we accept God as our personal Lord and Savior, He tells us that we are born again he actually breathes his breath of life into us and causes us to become eternal beings and that's when he fills us with the Holy Spirit every believer everyone who is born again has the life of God dwelling in them and that's why we will have eternal life and then the next point God cares about all of his creation if you when we read that story we saw how how God cared about the plants and you know he even planted the garden in the east to get sun he he cares he cared he took care to plant he actually put the seed in the ground himself with his own fingers that's why there is an anointing on the process of tithing, the giving, the tithing into good soil. That's why it will bring about a harvest because God anointed it to do that. He anointed seed to reproduce. So seed will always reproduce. Whatever, whatever you sow is a seed. Deeds are seeds as well. Whatever you plant is a seed and that will grow whether it is good or whether it is bad because God set up the system that once a seed is planted then a harvest will come forth from that. And um, that's why um, he also put into place the tithing and the off the tithing and the offering the giving because that's how in him we can re, we can produce good and godly a harvest from that another point god is intentional and deliberate everything he did was intentional and deliberate it was not haphazard it was with a purpose and to deliberately bring about something that was positive and good. Well, we can think about the enemy too. He's deliberate too. Because he focused on what God did and he copied him. Only he's the dark side of it. So he's intentional too with what he does. He's very intentional and very deliberate. But what he does brings about wickedness and bad things. But what God does brings about good things and beauty. And so now I want to go ahead to the scripture, which is Psalm 42. And I think, I think Faye reads this week. 
Psalm 42. Yes. Okay. As the heart panteth after, I'm sorry, as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my feet day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember those things, I pour out my soul in thee. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill, you know, uh, Mizar. Thee calleth unto thee at the noise of thy water spout. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over thee. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Where art thou cast down? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the hope of my countenance and my God. Okay, thank you. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. So I'm going to go back over that and um, just look at it a little closer. Um, Psalm 42, as the hearth panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. So another translation says, as the deer. So this is, this is talking about an animal. As the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. So, um, as I said, um, when we see God, capital G, it's talking about the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is showing, um, this is talking about, if you can, in your mind, sometimes in the Bible when, you, when you're when you reading things and it, you know, the, the language is different. The way it's say, is said is different than what we would say. They're using terms that they used in their day. But if you can visualize um, a deer that is so thirsty, it's hot, it's, it's tired, it's exhausted, it needs to be refreshed. That's the image here. This is, this, uh, the psalmist is saying that's how much they felt that they needed God. Just like how a deer is so tired and exhausted and needing to be refreshed. That's how this psalmist is saying that he, he needed God, that his soul needed the Lord. Verse 2, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So back then, God did not dwell within man as uh, the Holy Spirit does today. We take for granted today that God actually, when we become a Christian, he dwells in us. Back then, he did not. In the Old Testament, he was dwelling, he would be in buildings or, or the worship place, wherever the worship place was. And they would go there to meet God. And so, he was talking about wanting to go to that place. So, for, for some reason, he wasn't going to that place. Um, he was away from that place. 
and he was saying how he felt that he needed to be in the presence of God. My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? So this is someone who was obviously at a, at a time and a place in his life where he was having difficulties. And even within those difficulties, he was being taunted. And people were telling him, you're putting your trust in God. Where is he? I'm still doing these horrible things to you. Where's your God? In other words. Um, then verse 4. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. So he's now in his mind. Sometimes when we have difficulties in life, we can go back in our mind to a time when things were more pleasant. And that helps us to even hope for better days again. And that's what he's doing. He's, he's remembering things. And again, this topic, the, the character of God we're looking at today is Jehovah Elohim. Elohim, remember I said that when you see God with the capital G, that is translated from Elohim, meaning God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He is talking about the triune God every time he's saying God. He, that's who he's talking about. So what he's saying that he's feeling towards God, the Bible lets us know that these are things that the triune God will do for us. He'll give us relief. When we are, you know, in desperate situations, when we need our soul to be refreshed in the Lord, Jehovah Elohim will do that for us. Um, then verse 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. See, that's telling us what he'll do for us. He'll help us. He'll help our countenance. When we are not feeling so well or happy or we're having problems with our countenance. Elohim, God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit will help us. But we need to be intentional just like this psalmist is being intentional. He's taking himself to a place of remembrance. To remember the goodness of the Lord. Remember the goodness of the Lord. You have to have a heart of thanksgiving in order to remember the goodness of the Lord. Because if you don't thank Him, you'll miss all the good things that He does in our lives for us. The goodness outweighs the bad every single day. The multitude of good things that go right in our lives every day, we can't even count it if we try. Just the fact that, you know, our bodies are working, our, our, our organs are working. Our, we can start with ourselves and go outward. And we can start with ourselves from body, soul, and spirit. And look at all of the good things and go outward. We, we would not ever get beyond just ourselves and looking at the goodness of how God is to us. And how we can thank Him and praise Him every day. We have so many good things within us that the good always outweighs the bad. No matter if we are trusting in God, if he's our father, the good will always outweigh the bad. No matter what negative situations are going on. Because we know that in this life, negativity will come sometimes. But the good will always outweigh the bad. The psalmist is reminding us, you must remember it though. Because if you don't, you can miss it. Take your mind back to Jesus, to the Lord, to Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And let your, your countenance be refreshed and, re, and lifted in the Lord. Verse 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember. That's what I just said. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan. The land of Jordan, remember I said, back then God did not dwell within man. He, he was in a worship place, a meeting place. He was remembering this. Remember, we have to go back to the place of remembering. Remember, and that will lift our spirits. 
um, from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Now he's talking about um, his feelings. He's expressing what he's feeling. He, he, he talked about what he's going to remember. He's saying that he's going to remember God in, in the verse before. But now he's talking about why he needs to remember God. When we are in a place where we are not feeling so good, we we this this psalmist is saying, "Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts, and thy waves and thy billows are gone over me." He felt totally overwhelmed with whatever situation he was dealing with in his life. But the remedy for that was God, Elohim, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Verse eight. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Now he's now he's saying it. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. That's what his soul need. Need it. Loving kindness. Remember how he was being taunted. Wherever he was in his life, bad things were being done to him. And then they were laughing at the bad things they were doing to him. Even taunting him. Where is, where is your God? I'm still doing these evil things to you. Where's your God at? And he's saying, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness. So other people can do whatever they're going to do. But God will be kind to us. His love has his kindness within it. Loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. When we sing to ourselves, we can even make up our own songs. Those things will lift our spirits immeasurably. Sing, hum, make yourself happy. Be joyful in the Lord. That's how you lift your countenance. You start with a thankful heart. Remember and acknowledge the good things. Sing, be praiseful, and God's loving kindness will embrace you. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. He has a fellowship with the Lord. He's in communication with him. In order for, for God to bless our lives and to help us in the way that he wants to help us, we have to have a personal relationship with him. We have to form a real relationship. He is a real person. He's not a spirit, a person, a human person. He's a spiritual person. He is a real person. We have to develop the relationship with him. And then, and access him for these things that he's saying he'll do for us. That's like with anything. If you never access something, it will never benefit you. The psalmist is telling us how to enter into a close relationship with, the, with God. He remembered him. He prays to him. He's thankful for what God has done. Verse 9. I will say unto, unto God my rock. Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? So now he's, he's talking again. And we do that. Don't we? We go back and forth. Sometimes we can be thinking a positive thought and then the next second we'll go back to something negative he's demonstrating the real working of a human mind his mind was going back and forth I will say unto, uh, uh, unto God my rock yet he's still calling him his rock he's, he's recognizing he is still my rock though he's my foundation why hast thou for, forgotten me why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemies Sometimes if you have been in a situation that is difficult, especially for a long time, you will question. That is a normal emotion that you will start to feel like, how long do I have to go through this? When is this all going to, to go away? Those are normal emotions. Verse 10, as with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me. He's now revealing how, how, how 
you know, much people have been bothering him. Uh, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? This is relentless. He said they're doing this daily. Then verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Now he's talking to himself. He's encouraging himself. This is a clue also to us. Talk to yourself. Encourage yourself. Words have power. Speak life into yourself. Why art thou cast down, O my God, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. He's giving himself a real good talk right here. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. He's, he's, he's coming to grips with what he needs to do to rise above the situation. For I shall yet praise him. Who is, who is the health of my countenance? He's saying, this is where my countenance will be healthy. It's in God. Who is the health of my countenance? And my God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's saying, God, Elohim, the Creator, the Sovereign One. The One who is above all things. He's reminding himself, this is my God. The One who's above all of the stuff that goes on in this earthly realm. The One who has ultimate control ultimate power there's no power above him he's the one that made everything even the enemies that keep bothering me he made them too and he has ultimate power above everything and he's reminding himself of this here and so i'm going to go ahead and, and stop with that and we'll go on to our discussion father god thank you so much for blessing us with another day to just think about you to learn of you thank you lord for re revealing yourself to us jehovah elohim please continue to enlighten us god so that we will better understand you we love you and we just ask that you will bless us keep us make your face to shine upon us lift up your countenance upon us be gracious to us and give us peace in the mighty name of jesus and all that agree with the prayer and say amen Amen. Amen.